So in this video, we're going to learn about main effects in statistically designed experiments. So what they are, how to calculate them, and why we care about them. So let's say that I'm a, I don't know, cactus farmer, and my goal is to grow the biggest, most beautiful cactus that you've ever seen. So let's call this cactus over here, I don't know, Bob. He's our little, our little cactus. And let's say that there's two variables or factors that we're interested in looking at. The first is the amount of sunlight that our cacti get. And the second is the amount of water that they get. And so our goal is to find the combination of these two factors that will get us the fastest growing cactus. And let's say that we're using a full factorial experiment where we have two different levels. So let's say that water is on the x-axis and we have a low level of water and a high level of water. And then on the y-axis, let's say this is our sunlight and we want to test a low level of sunlight and a high level of sunlight. And so the four experiments that we're going to do, I can just represent as dots on this little graph. So we, we have four different combinations of variables that we're testing. And so let's say that we actually run the experiment and we're measuring how much the cactus grows in, I don't know, say a month. And we get for this experiment that it grew five centimeters. This experiment, it grew four centimeters. This experiment, it grew only one centimeter. And this experiment, let's say it grew seven centimeters. So the question is, how do we make sense of this data in terms of the variables that we had, which were water and sunlight? So how do we figure out which one, if either of these is helpful? Well, this is where main effects come in. So suppose I want to find the effect of water or what I'll call the main effect of water. The sort of most sensible way I can think of doing this is we take the average for the high conditions of, so where we had high water, and we subtract the average value from the low conditions. And this is what we call the main effect of water. So this gives us a sense of whether water independently has an effect on our experiment. So here we have, looks like five centimeters plus four centimeters over two. That's our average for the high water experiment minus seven centimeters plus one centimeter over two. And so that is what looks like 4.5 centimeters minus 4 centimeters or 0.5 centimeters. So this is the average effect of changing the watering conditions on the cactus from low to high. So it's not, it's not huge. It's, uh, it's relatively small. What about for sunlight? So let's ask, what is the main effect of sunlight? And again, that's just the average of all the experiments in the high condition, which is just these two. So seven centimeters plus five centimeters plus five centimeters over two. And then we subtract all the values in the low condition. So one centimeter plus four centimeter over two. And so that looks like six centimeters minus 2.5 centimeters, which is just equal to 3.5 centimeters. And this is the main effect of sunlight. So the way that we interpret these two, well, it looks like water never got a meter. So the way that we interpret these two is that sunlight by itself has a pretty substantial effect on cactus growth, but water by itself doesn't appear to. So it's, it's, or its effect is much smaller than that of sunlight. And so this is why main effects are useful. They let us figure out in even a very complex experimental design what the independent effect of a variable is.